Welcome back, Fullerton neighbors. I am your host, Giselle Monterrosas, and here is your Fullerton Observer video recap for the last few days of February. Back in 2022, the Fullerton Fire Department was urging the city to contract out fire department services to the Orange County Fire Authority. The reason behind this was that the Fullerton Fire Department has staff retention issues and aging infrastructure and contracting out to OCFA was said to relieve these issues. During the October 2022 meeting, Council Majority voted against outsourcing and instead retain the Fullerton Fire Department and see what they can approve. Since the city will be retaining the Fullerton Fire Department, some significant changes will be an 8% across the board pay increase effective for the first pay period after January 1st, 2023, and subsequent pay increases of 4% in July and annually after that. The agreement would cost the city an extra 12 million dollars. During public comments, Joshua Ferguson said how the item, if passed, would not be adequately funded and would need a tax. Quote, this item is a slap in the face. You're blowing a 1.8 million dollar hole in a budget that already has a structural deficit. Then the next year, it is a 2.8 million dollar hole in the budget, then 3.8 the next year. It just keeps going up and there's no way to fund it. Council member Zara said, quote, if we had gone with OCF we would have had everything we need immediately, but now we're just gradually having to build this up over the next five years. One can predict that in five years, because of inflation, our firefighters will remain underpaid unless in five years we do another significant jump. And Mr. Ferguson is right in the sense of how we are going to pay for all of that. Zara later says that this plan, in his opinion, is less than what they deserve and is less than adequate, but it is all we can do at this point. Council member Dr. Charles mentioned that during her election, she was endorsed by the Firefighter Association and was in support of the movement of the OCFA and was disappointed in the vote by the council to not go with OCFA. She later thanked the firefighters for their dedication to staying with the city, taking pride in it and wanting to rebuild the fire department. Charles said, quote, this is our best compromise considering our situation. Council member Nick Dunlap said, quote, I won't be supporting this item tonight, but unfortunately the costs are too extreme and I think this will be very challenging for the city to deal with. Unfortunately, it wouldn't surprise me if what was mentioned by some of the commenters was that this is a backdoor tax. Councilmember Zara motioned to approve and Councilmember Charles second, passing by a simple majority of three to two. Jung, Zara, and Charles, yes. Whitaker and Dunlap, no. A new proposal for using the Hunt Library building and adjacent property is coming before the Hunt Library Ad Hoc Committee on February 27th. The meeting is held in the Fullerton Public Library at 5 p.m. Korean Community Services, KCS, submitted a proposal to build a medical clinic on the land commonly known as the dog park or somewhere else on the Hunt Library land. There is a possibility of housing as well. The medical clinic will allow KCS to manage and upkeep the property and the historic Hunt building. Management includes options of the Hunt having a library space for kids to study after school, arts and crafts classes, and venue rentals. There's a possibility of a long-term lease of 50 years for the property. So who is the Korean Community Services? According to the KCS website, it is a nonprofit organization that has served communities in Southern California for over 40 years. They provide comprehensive and integrated health care and social services to vulnerable populations in Orange County. Initially funded by EDLA, KCS was created as an immigrant mission project of St. Nicholas Korean Church in Los Angeles in 1977. Through the 1970s and 1980s, KCS emerged as a dynamic Korean immigrant social service organization providing job training, information and outreach, counseling, food bank, legal assistance, and educational materials in Los Angeles. In 1992, KCS relocated to Orange County 
County expanding its programs to include mandated court counseling for domestic violence, child abuse, drunk driving, and drug offenders. By 2000s, KCS became one of the largest Orange County counseling providers serving the courts, probation department, and social services. The community is welcome to attend the meeting and let the committee know what specific programs and requirements they would like. Marjorie Kerr wrote, quote, We walked into a spaceship on Friday evening, February 3rd. We were greeted by Emily, spacesuited in white. We roamed the aisles of boxes containing models to make, like airplanes, etc., among other curious objects at the Magoski Model Mania in Fullerton. There was, in a secluded corner, an ensemble art exhibit by John Salome. I like the woodcuts hung in a hallway by Emily Heller. As we walked further into the space, we discovered other artists' work hanging or leaning against walls. Mid-evening, around 7 p.m., Al Garcia mounted the makeshift stage with his guitar to play and sing folk songs. The sitting and standing audience enjoyed his music, dancing or clapping to his tunes. There was a small section featuring books by sci-fi author Phil Dick. Around 8 p.m., Jesse Latour presented a PowerPoint talk reviewing the author's life. Dick was brought to CSUF by Professor Will McNelly. Jesse's lecture was very informative about Dick's spacey life. Astronaut hosts suited in white space uniforms circulated among the visitors to answer questions or give directions. This Model Mania spaceship evening is planned for the first Friday of each month. Perhaps other Fullerton establishments can join the first Friday art walk with their own music and art. At 2 p.m. March 18th in the Polak Library at Cal State Fullerton, LA Times columnist Gustavo Arellano will give a talk on Orange County history. This is open to the public and includes free parking. At 7.30 p.m. March 9th through 11th, Fullerton College will be performing In the Heights at the Campus Theater or the 1300th building. You can buy tickets online or go in person at the corner of Lemon and Chapman. Lastly, at 4.30 p.m. March March 3rd, Half Off Books will be hosting a local author book signing by Linda Shalow for her book, See You Zen. Half Off Books said there will be refreshments. And that concludes our Fullerton Observer video recap. To all my Fullerton neighbors, thank you so much for watching. Be sure to follow the Fullerton Observer on all social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter to stay updated in the latest local news. All our stories, including the mentioned headlines, are available on the Fullerton Fullerton Observer website or you can subscribe to the classic print edition that gets mailed to your home every two weeks. You can also send donations on our website to support your volunteer local journalists at www.fullertonobserver.com. Shout out to Adrian Mesa for editing and managing communications. I am your host Giselle Monterrosas and we will recap again next time.